Education Minister for Children, Families and Wellbeing, Claire Coutinho, uh, who, Coutinho, forgive me, who is representing the government this morning. Um, you've been supporting Daniel Korski up until now. You tweeted saying, uh, Dan has a clear vision for London. He's focused on solutions, not problems, and will be a great mayor. I'm thrilled to back him. I think we've got that tweet as well. Um, do you still support him? Well, look, I think the allegation is very serious. I think the behaviour described has no place in society, it has no place in the workplace. At the moment, I don't think there is a formal complaint, or I'm there not is. aware if there, there, there is. is, but that should be followed up. It should be followed up swiftly. To the Cabinet Office. Because the right thing is to make sure that we've got a good candidate for the Mayor of London. That's what the people of London deserve. Are you pausing your support for him? I would say, you know, I'd be on pause at the moment because lots of things are, you are, are happening. You are pausing your support? Yes, because I think we need to see what's happened. But at the same time, this is an allegation. Uh, he's roundly denied it. Uh, if there is a complaint in the system, there it, is. Needs to be, it needs to be followed up swiftly so we can find uh, the, the facts and, and see what's happened. But I do think it's a very serious and concerning allegation. Should he step aside while that investigation is ongoing? Well, I mean, at this moment, there isn't an investigation There is an investigation. Yet. Well, um, she's well, reported it to the Cabinet Office. Well, so I'm guessing, you said it's a serious case, so I'm guessing the Cabinet Office will follow that up and investigate it. As a result, should he step aside for now? Well, so I, I can't speculate about the investigation, which hasn't happened yet. But, so at the moment, it is a decision for Daniel Korski. OK, let me put it he another way. Should it be investigated? If there is a complaint, it should be followed up, absolutely, and it should be followed up swiftly. So as a result, should he step aside while that's ongoing? Well, at the same, you know, I think it's important that we wait to see if that happens. But absolutely, if there is a formal complaint, it should be followed up. I think it's really important. And should he step aside while that really happens? It's really important that we've got the right person to be the mayoral uh, candidate should for London. Should he step aside while that happens? Uh, well, I, I'm, you know, it's hard to speculate until you see what happens. It's not speculating. Happens. She's written to the Cabinet Office or she's contacted the Cabinet Office and said, this geezer groped me 10 years ago. It's not acceptable. You say it's a serious allegation. As a result, the Cabinet Office will have to investigate it, obviously. Simple question, should he step aside while that's happening? Look, I think if there is a full investigation, then we'll look at what's happened. It's really important to see what those facts are. Until we've established facts, it is a decision for Mr Korski about whether he continues to stand. But as I said, the behaviour that's described in that allegation is incredibly serious. Do you believe Daisy Goodwin? Um, so I don't know Daisy Goodwin. All I've done is I know the same amount of you. I've seen the article. As I said, I think it is a really serious allegation. Lots of women, um, you know, lots of women have faced harassment in the workplace. I think it is, you know, not the kind of behaviour that we'd want to see from anyone. And I think it is really important, as you say, if there's a formal complaint, that it is followed up. She says she didn't come forward. Um, she talked about this incident uh, seven years ago. She didn't name who it was because she felt that she wouldn't be believed. She finally found her voice as a result of the Me Too movement um, and felt that finally she could make her point. Does she have a point? I think all women who face that kind of behaviour have a point. It's really, it's really difficult thing to do to go through that kind of experience in work when you are expected to be taken seriously, where you're expecting to be respected. Um, I think it's a really horrible experience for, for women to go through, for anyone to go through, and I think it's really important that we take it seriously where it's happened. And do you have sympathy for him? Um, so at the moment it is an allegation. I think it's really important that we wait to see what the facts are. Do you are. have sympathy for him? I mean, I have sympathy for his family, and I think it is a, a difficult thing to go through. But it's really important that we for him. It was really important that we establish the facts, Kay. Do you have sympathy for him? I mean, I have sympathy for for all people who are going through difficult circumstances. I work with families in very Do you have difficult for him? Uh, circumstances. I mean, I, what at the moment I have uh, sympathy for is the people okay, of London. Okay, let me ask you for the sixth time. Do you have sympathy for him? I mean, I think it's really important that we establish the facts. I, I mean, at the moment, we don't know. For the so seventh is, time, so, do you have sympathy for but him? But, you're asking me to have sympathy with someone we don't have the facts established yet. No, I'm asking you because you support him. You know him quite obviously. He's obviously a friend of yours or certainly a very strong acquaintance. He's going through this at the moment. He's certainly in the public eye. He was hoping that he was going to be potentially the Mayor of London. Now he's finding himself in the spotlight for all sorts of different reasons. He may well have to step down as a result. Do you have sympathy for Look, him? Look, I'm sure it's a very difficult time for him and his family. Do you have sympathy for him? I'm sure it's a very difficult time, Kay. I have sympathy for everyone who's going through difficult times. Um, OK, you're not going to answer the question. A spokesman for the PM saying Downing Street is a safe place for women. Has it always been so? Well, look, I've worked with the current Prime Minister for a long time and I absolutely can say he treats all people with respect and, yes, it is a safe space for women. I know lots of the Has women... Has it always that... been? 
I mean, so I've only worked uh, in the current period. That's all that I can talk about, as you'll understand. Uh, but as I've said, I've worked with him. He's got a culture of respect. And I know lots of people who work in Number 10 who would say, absolutely, there's a culture of respect and it's a safe space to work. There's an issue um, for lots of um, our viewers this morning, the form of childcare, many of them struggling uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we know that you've announced already that universal credit uh, will be increased. Um, what about the 33 hours that we heard about? Uh, that the, the Chancellor was talking about. Is that still on the cards? Absolutely. So this is part of an overall package, which is the single largest ever investment into childcare. And what we're starting it with is we're starting with families on the lowest incomes, families on universal credit. Uh, and from today, what they'll be able to get is help with their childcare costs up front, something which we know is a big barrier for people going back to work. Uh, and also, we are raising the maximum allowances by about 50%. So now you'll be able to get uh, up to £950 for one child and £1,630 for two children, which should help families not only with the family finance, uh, but make sure that if they want to go to work, that they're, they're able to do so. Uh, the 30 hours uh, part of the programme for working families is also a really important part. We spend about sort of three and a half, four billion pounds on those entitlements at the moment. By 27, 28, we'll have doubled that amount. Uh, the first part of that expansion will kick in in April next year. So if you have a two-year-old, you'll be able to access 15 hours of support. In September of that year, if you've got a child under two, you'll be able to get some support. And then the following year, we're going to get to full rollout of that 30 hours. So that means if you've got a child right from the end of maternity leave up to primary school, you'll be able to get support, which is worth, on average, £6,500 per family. What about if you have to take your youngster um, to hospital in um, July? There'll be a week where basically you don't either have a junior doctor or a senior doctor available, you guys are going to have to get a grip of this. Well, look, I think six of the seven health unions so far have accepted the, the pay offer. I really hope that junior doctors uh, and consultants will get there as well. It's really important that patients can get the health care that they need. We know there's lots of people on the waiting list. But as I said, I think most health unions now have accepted the pay offer. I saw yesterday that the nurses aren't going to, to strike no, again. Talking, absolutely, but we're talking about doctors in particular. Yes, and I really hope that they get to the same position. Well, they're not at the moment, are they? That's why they're going on strike. Yes, and I think look, it's really important to, to make sure that we try and find uh, reasonable positions at the moment, I think the BMA position is for 35% pay increases, which I think everyone can understand that that's not affordable for the country. Uh, and so I hope we can get to the same conclusion. Six and a half percent is what the pay review bodies are saying for junior doctors. Uh, so at the moment, they'll be going through that negotiation, but I think the BMA have said that they want 35%. Yeah, but junior doctors want six. Uh, uh, the pay review body, sorry, junior doctors also want 35%. You're absolutely right. But the pay review body is suggesting, independent pay review body, as the government always tells me, is uh, saying 6.5% for junior doctors. Are you going to offer them that? Well, at the moment, as you'll know, the way the pay review body works is they recommend an amount uh, that goes into government. Government will respond in due course. You'll appreciate that I can't... Uh, talk about that before the government has responded. Uh, but you'll have seen that we've been trying to find the, the best ways through to negotiate with all the different public sector workers to make sure that they can get the, the salaries that they need, but also that we're Why balancing that. Why wouldn't you that. pay them six and a half percent? Because we also have to look at uh, affordable finances. We know at the moment, for example, that we've got this uh, a problem with inflation. We need to make nothing sure... Nothing to do with inflation. We need to make sure that but, we have but, a grip on public spending. public spending has nothing to do with inflation. Well, I mean, these are, these are the ways... It doesn't impact inflation. But this is the, the same does process... It? OK, this is the same process that happens every year. Public spending does have an impact on inflation. In what way? Public spending does have a big impact on inflation because if you borrow to spend on public services, then you will fuel inflation. Inflation, inflation is um, uh, impacted by uh, certainly private sector pay, but um, public sector, like, I don't know, like teaching, uh, like the health service, like the police, that's free at the point of service, so it doesn't impact on inflation. Okay, that's simply not true. So if you think about the factors, that's what, if you think about the factors... That's what the... That's what the, about um, the there's plenty of economists that will agree with that, but if you think about the factors that affect uh, public um, inflation, you have monetary policy... It's reported by the London you School have, of Economics you have, just last week you on have, exactly this There'll point. be plenty of economists who agree that public spending does have an impact on inflation, as does monetary policy, as does supply side uh, of certain things within the economy. And we are looking at all of those issues. How are you going to protect Thames Water customers? So at the moment, uh, what's happening with the water companies is they are putting forward the pay rises uh, for their customers. That's going through off what at the moment, and then they'll agree prices. But off what have a duty to make sure that consumers are protected. Obviously, we have been very focused on helping consumers with the, the support no, in I'm terms of cost of living. I'm talking particularly about the fact that Thames Water might collapse. 
What's the government going to do to, so to at, help it? At the moment, the, the, what's happening with off what, which is the regulator, is that the water companies are putting forward their prices. So they'll be looking at how they can have sustainable finances, but off what has to ba balance that with making sure that they're protecting consumers, which I think is the right Would place to Would you take it back be. into public control? As well, a last resort. I mean, I've seen some speculation in the press. Obviously, I can't comment on that. But what I do think is right is we get the balance but it, between... But you would have no choice but to take it back into public control as that, a last resort. That, that will depend, uh, that will depend on the conversations. That will depend on the conversations that Thames Water has with its regulator and, and the conversations it has with its investors, which you can understand I'm not party to. But I think what's but the, really the important... The customers have been failed, though, haven't they? I mean, the bosses have to step down overnight. The, uh, Thames Water customers watching us this morning have been failed by their boss. Well, look, I, I certainly think there are water companies like uh, Thames Water, which are in difficult positions. But I think our position as government is to make sure that we have the right policies in place to see consumers protected, but also that we're dealing with things which are really important to the country, like dealing with the sewage leaks. So what we've been asking companies to do is to make sure they're putting forward investment plans. And then what we've separately been doing is helping households with their family finances through cost of living support. Those are the two things that government has been doing. OK, it's good to talk to you. Sadly, we're out of time. Thanks.